Yeah, we're started. We should be live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do a quick test, at least for the recording. <laughs> Yeah, test, test, this is a test. Looks, looks good. All right. Yeah, good. yeah there, uh, there's a folder open somewhere, I think. So, yeah, so scientific computing. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's The annoying thing is how they put this one here, right? Yeah, I can, but is there? You want to I can move this No, no, no. It's just how far, how far does this move? Because if I can move this, can you move that one? Or, or that one works too? Yeah, sure. Okay, so if I put that one here, then. I think so. Don't try to okay. So you only need to start the recording. Yeah, and, and the rest then, is good, uh, right? Let me, I don't remember if the, oh, one oh, you want to put it on the chat? Time. Yeah. We're going to see if I can switch off the front lights here. <sighs> yeah. Thanks everybody for hanging in there. It's first time set up takes a while. Well, uh, Marcelo, um, welcome. As you probably know this is the first time we actually work the calendar. Uh, just uh, out of your oh, I'm Danny Gruner, that's Ramses, Anton. Marcelo Ponce, and we have one more guy who's going to help with the, with the last uh, third of the course for Northrop. Um, as you probably know, we uh, we work at Signet on the center uh, here at UFG. And uh, we're really excited that you guys can finally help uh, us. Um, out of curiosity. Not. Okay. Because I mean, you, as long as your part, your supervisor, and your graduate office allows you a physics course for credit, then you should be able to credit. If you do that, then you have to sign in through a course. Oh, they, they will, uh, Awesome. This is also part of our modular courses that we're teaching uh, the previous, I don't know, three years or so. Three, four or five. Three or four, <laughs> or I don't know how many years. So if people want parts of this, you know, each, this is a three part course. Uh, if any of the parts as, as a modular course, and that is the astro or physics or with chemistry, depending on the um, <laughs> I'm just excited that this is, this is so I'll let Ramses get on with it. Um, I'll, I'll have more wonderful admin -y stuff to tell you as well, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so, so for me also, welcome to this uh, scientific computing course. Uh, it's called Scientific Computing for Physicists. If you're not a physicist, don't worry. It's really aimed at physical sciences, that's true, but um, you know, if you're if you're a chemist or you have a chemist friend that wants to come along next time, or a biologist, uh, by all means, um, if they if they have uh, the interest. So, first a little bit about the course. So this is going to be the whole term, uh, twelve weeks, uh, with a break in the uh, in the reading week, um, and we're going to and it's going to be about scientific computing, and, and we'll see what that really means. We're going to assume that you have some basic programming experience. This is not a course where we teach you to program, because uh, otherwise we don't get to the scientific part of things. So we're going to assume that you know either a little bit of C or C++ or Fortran or maybe some Python, 
Um, you've written a function. You've, you've maybe if you've done C, C plus plus front end, you've done some compilations. Um, right? A little bit of that, uh, and then we decided to settle on C plus plus as a language for the course. We need to, we needed to choose one. We didn't want to choose Python because we're because if you have heavy duty scientific computing to do, Python will, will eventually be too slow for you. So we wanted to teach you a language that you can really use for hardcore science. Um, C++, it was going to be C++ or Fortran. And we tossed a coin and a C++. And it's good, too, in the sense that if you're not going on in science, if at some point you want a career outside of science, there's more places where you can use your C++ and your Fortran. So that's just a, a, a slight side effect that, that so we're going to look. Yeah, the, the one thing about it is, if you inherit Fortran code from a physical client, then you have so questions, issues, whatever. They would help. Come to our. Right. Don't worry about the language. Yeah. So what we're going to use, although it's C plus plus, is is in some extent C plus plus light. Um, we're not going to use all the fancy features that C plus plus can offer, uh, as wonderful as they may, might be. If you want to use some of them in the homeworks, that's fine, but that's not what we're going to expect. OK, so Fortran style C++ is fine with us as long as it's good Fortran style. OK, uh, so we're going to look at scientific computing and programming skills, uh, some parallel programming, some hybrid programming, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, and it's kind of uh, historically been split up in three parts. And uh, these are the three parts. Scientific software development is the first part, then a part about numerical tools, which is really about libraries that already exist that you can use in your own code that you don't have to program in and you don't have to waste time on. Uh, and then the last part about high performance scientific computing, which is really about parallel programming. Uh, when you get to that stage where uh, running a serial code is just not fast enough or it doesn't cover enough cases for you. You can take this, the course as a whole. Uh, who here has signed up for this course as a, a 1610H altogether? So most of you. Um, but if you don't want to, if, 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 you, uh, if you want to take it as what's called a mini course or modular course, uh, that's still possible. And then these three ones can count as a mini modular course. So let us know when that's something you want to do, because we have to do a little bit of different admin uh, behind the scenes. But, um, but this is totally possible. Okay. But we're going to teach it as if, as if it's one course, and then we're going to grade you accordingly uh, if, if you need a mini course. Now, if you're not taking it for credit, or university credit in this case, uh, we at Synet have a certificate program where if you take enough of our courses, we give you a certificate. These things count towards that as well. Um, OK, so who are we? So we're all what I would call computational science analysts from Synet. So Danny already sort of introduced us. Uh, Daniel, uh, so Danny, uh, Marcelo, Scott, and myself, Ramses. Uh, and what we are as Cyanet, because you might not know this, is basically we're a consortium of U of T and the research hospitals. Uh, but for all practical purposes, we're a high performance computing department of, of U of T. Uh, we're just south of, uh, of College Street, so we're, we're right, right next by. Um, and we, have, we run some of the larger uh, supercomputers that are available to academics in Canada. Um, and we don't only run them, we don't only install software, but we also teach users how to use these, uh, these systems. And, this is, and out of that teaching grew this actual uh, graduate course. So we've been teaching users because you, you don't get taught, well, you definitely don't get taught parallel programming in most curricula, but you don't even get taught sort of best practices in how to do software development. You might get a programming course, perhaps, that how to do that properly or how to do that in a collaboration, you don't really get taught. So, we're teaching, we've been teaching that for years, and now we can teach it as an actual course, uh, and this is it. Now, as Synet, as, as uh, one of the uh, supercomputer centers in Canada, um, we are part of a larger organization called Compute Canada that is basically the, the, the uh, association of all of these centers throughout uh, Canada. There are some in, in the West, there are some in the Atlantic, there are some in Quebec, as you can imagine. Um, and Compute Canada sort of organizes and, and, and orchestrates that a little bit. Uh, and what's nice about that organization is that once you have access to one of the sites, you can ask for an account on any of the other sites. So if we don't have enough uh, graphics card for you to do your computing on, you could go to another site uh, fairly easily and, and, and use their systems. So it's a sharing system. And so we have researchers from all across Canada, not just the 50. 
Uh, what U of T gains by us by being here is that you can come to us and say, I have this problem, and face to face we can solve the problem. So that is kind of. So that's us. Um, because of who we are and how things are set up, um, there's a few admin things to take care of after know. So we'll go over those. Uh, as we're starting the course, uh, there'll, be pro there'll be programming assignments, homework. Uh, at the beginning, you can do this on your own computer. As long as, as you have a, a Linux or Unix-like environment, so uh, an actual Linux laptop would do, or if you have a Mac, you have most of this stuff uh, already. Um, if you're on Windows, uh, we won't scold you too much, uh, but install something like Sigwin or Mobile Xterm, um, and in that you can install compilers, et cetera, uh, and get a, a working environment. The other thing you will need at some point is a version control software, uh, a thing called Git. So those are some things to install if you want to do the homework on your own machine. But especially towards the third part of the course, where we're doing parallel programming, you'll be working on one of our supercomputers. Because if you have a nice laptop with two cores, that's great, or maybe even four. But you can't see how your code scales if you run it on eight cores if you only have four. So just for the, the, the pleasure of testing your code, um, you will be using your supercomputers. This is the machine you'll be using. Not the whole thing, but parts of it. Uh, but uh, so this is our general purpose cluster. Uh, we have wonderful naming schemes, um, and they're very uh, poetic. So general purpose cluster, GPC, is the actual name of the machine. Uh, about 30,000 cores, and you can look up the specs. But uh, what that means is to use this, you'll need an account with Synet. And so I'll briefly go over how that goes um, so that you can get it started. Who here has a Synet account already? Okay, so quite, quite a few, that's nice. And the others will have to go through this process. Um, great, if you're wrong. Um, it, it looks a little tedious, it doesn't take very long, but the way it works, because it goes through Compute Canada uh, centrally, there's a two-step approach. And the, that holds both for you and for your supervisor. So the, the, I'm, I'm describing here your proper way. This is the way you should try to do it. Um, if there's any kinks in this, we can work around them. Okay? Uh, so your supervisor, might already have a Compute Canada account. Many of the physics uh, faculty do have a Synet account. Um, and, uh, so, and then there's, there's two accounts. There's a Compute Canada account, and then under that falls a Synet account. Um, so then once your supervisor has that, or if he already has that, you do the same thing. You get a Compute Canada account and then a Synet account. So the details on how to do that, I didn't want to put on a the slide. They're in, in this link. and. Um, Get started on it. Uh, ask your supervisor if he has a Compute Canada account and sign that account. They might not have remembered that there's two accounts. Um, unfortunately, as, as it said, now you can still have separate passwords for both accounts, which is something they're working on, but it's not that. So this gets complicated just once. Once you have your sign that account, it stops being complicated. You just log in and you're fine. OK? So just some, some admin stuff. Stuff? Oh, absolutely. Of course, is that signed? Yes. Let us know. I have the email in a separate slide in a big, big purple letters. Um, oh, by the way, the slides are going to be on the website, uh, of which I give you the, I'll give you the uh, link in a second. So here we go. So we'll do a lot of our stuff through the courses website. And we have our own. We're not using uh, the university's Blackboard, uh, just because this site is also used for our users, which might be anywhere in Canada, right? Um, so we have our own, everything that you might know from Blackboard, it's pretty much possible here. We're not using everything um, because not everything makes sense. But this is where we'll put our lectures. Our, uh, you'll, we'll post our assignments. You can, you can uh, upload your assignments, uh, uh, your, your done assignments. There's a forum uh, where you can ask questions to all of you. You can all see that forum. There's a chat that we use during the lectures because um, actually we're also broadcasting these lectures live, so if you can make it. One day you can you can look on it. Uh, you, can, you can either watch the recording or see it online. So again, to be able to submit your homework, you need an account. Now, if you have a signed account, you automatically have an account on this one. This kind of makes sense. Um, if not, we might have to give you a temporary account. So if you're doing your homework and it takes a long time to get your signed account, um, let us know again, and we'll we'll give you something temporary so at least you can submit your homework. Okay. But ideally, you'll get your Synet account. Process, if, especially if your uh, supervisor already has an account, it might take a week or so, but that's it. Um, the first homework won't be due until next Thursday. And so there's, there is time. Um, 
I think most of you have done this, but if you're taking it for credit, uh, don't just sign up on this. So there is a sign up here, which we use for non-credited courses, and it's also enabled. But make sure you sign up in Acorn if you want to take this for credit. OK, so I told you about homeworks, and this is also how we're going to do the grades. So there'll be uh, weekly programming assignments. Uh, and this is going to be tough for you if you don't have much programming experience, especially in the beginning. Um, so I'm not saying this is the, that, that you shouldn't do it, but if you, if you, this is kind of the first, first four weeks is kind of where we try to pull everybody together to a similar level while also teaching some best practices. Okay? Um, if you're really good at C++ already, some of this is going to be uh, somewhat easy, but you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, you'll have a week to do the assignments. So the due dates are next week. And then the average of the 12 assignments will make up your grade. It's pretty easy. Um, we want all of the homeworks to be handed in. So even if your average is already above a passing mark, we still want you to submit the homework, it's because it's also a way for you to uh, digest the material. So even if it's not so good or you haven't half done, if you haven't submitted it, we can't give you a grade, because the average will, will. And then just to make sure that we can uh, get keep things moving, and this is, this is an unfortunate thing that we had to put in it, a year ago is that um, we have to have a, penal a penalty policy. So if you're late, you can still be you can be late up to one week, but for every day you subtract half a point out of the ten points. Of course, if there's something exceptional um, and you have a good reason why you missed something, just talk to us. We're reasonable, but this is the standard stuff. Okay, so just being just saying I was busy is not good enough. But you know, you have a family emergency or something, we, we, can, we can totally work with that. And then um, office hours. So we're, we'll have the two lectures a week. And you're, of course, free to ask questions afterward. But um, we'll, we put in place some official office hours from 2 to 3, uh, which are also an uh, opportunity for you to visit the Synod headquarters. Uh, they're on uh, 256 McCall Street on the second floor. I don't have a room number because there's a big sign that says Synod, so you can't, you can't really miss it. Um, so it's just south of, of, of college if you don't know where McCall is. We're across the street from the exam examination center. So. Um, if you have questions during the course and you can't make it to the office hours or you just have something urgent, write to courses at signat.utoronto.ca. Um, that email, uh, all, of the, all of the instructors get. So whoever has a little bit of free time to answer your question can do it. Uh, rather than trying to find our, our individual emails and finding that we were out of town for that day. If you've missed the class, no problem. Um, we're not insisting on you being here. We do insist on you watching the lectures. Um, we're not going to check you. But if you don't and you start asking questions that we've covered in class, we'll roll our eyes at that risk. Uh, so we're using Google Hangout on air. And we're going to po post the link to, to where that is uh, in the chat on the website. By the way, anything on the website is accessible except for the uploading of assignments, even without an account. So if you don't have an account yet, you can, you can access all of these. You can't type anything in the chat, but you should be able to see the chat and see the link. OK, so we don't want you to get behind just because your account is there. So that should all be possible. And we also record the lecture, so uh, you miss one and you can't be in the live session either. Um, typically, towards the end of the day or maybe the next day, we will have uh, the recording on the site. This also means that <clears throat> although I'm only recording the screen and my voice, if you swear really loudly, You'll be, you'll be recorded, OK? So uh, I'm not saying you can't do it. You suffer the consequences. Okay. Um, OK, so that's, so that's about the course and how it will go. Any questions about that? As I said, the slides are also on the, on the website. There's a syllabus that has pretty much the same content as well. Um, so yeah. Let me see. I think I have the, so this was a chat, but I can exit the chat. So this is kind of what it looks like. Let's go to the home. You'll have the content on the right here, so the lectures and the recordings and the assignments. They are still empty now, but the... hmm? yeah. Oh, you created this one. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, what you'll see this. So this is me as an instructor. But if I logged out, um, you wouldn't see all these crosses. I mean, edit mode. Sorry. Uh, you see uh, tabs here. Calendar events, which are just the lectures, um, links to things like MobaX term that I just said. If you want to get a Linux kind of thing on on, on Windows, 
have some old links of your previous sites. Uh, the forum, assignment Dropbox is where you'll have your assignments. Um, chat, forum is somewhere. Yeah, forum post will be here. That's kind of what it looks like. Uh, log out, log in is here. Um, if you've got more courses, you can go to all the, all the courses you have, the browse courses. Yeah, but that's kind of what it looks like. By all means, browse courses at some point. You can see what, what else we have. But for the sake of time, let's just continue. So um, I'll give a brief course outline so you know what's coming. And then we'll get started with C++. Um, again, this is sort of aimed at getting people up to speed. Um, so you'll see. You'll, We'll go not in detail of the programming, just describe the language a bit. OK, so we'll, this, is, this is the first part, C++ for this week mostly. We'll talk about some best practices like modular programming, version control, and arrays, uh, how to do this properly in the next week. We'll talk about debugging and profiling, which, are, which we try to attack early on, because those are extremely handy um, tools that you should know off right away, rather than figuring out two years in your, uh, in your PhD that there's such a thing as a debugger, and you could have solved your coding problems uh, in, in an hour rather than two weeks. That's happened to me. We've learned this by, by doing it. Now we're teaching it so that you don't have to waste that time. Uh, data structures and objects, which are also kind of data structures in the last lecture. So that's kind of C++ with, uh, with the idea of how would you uh, set up a, a proper scientific code. Um, while, while we're doing that. Then the next part is going to be mainly about what you don't have to code, things that are out there, libraries that you can use in your code that do things from optimization, file I.O., uh, differential equations, linear algebra, fast Fourier transforms, partial differential equations, stuff that's, that's basically already out there that you might need in your code, but uh, you're wiser not to use not to code it yourself, because people have thought about this, have made careers out of coding this thing, this stuff in. So why would you 